I wanted to first introduce you to one more concept that will kick off the second half of this presentation, which will focus on how we're optimizing the business. As you just heard, our behind the scenes strategy to build dedicated backends to serve separate industries, business models, and creator groups is well underway and performing exceptionally well. This focus on a dedicated backend for each industry, paired with our single front end experience for users, is what has enabled us to be the largest music streaming subscription service in the world and the most used podcast service in many markets around the world, including here in the US. It is our hope that we'll soon be leading the audiobook service as well. We're incredibly proud of this progress, and we're confident in our ability to repeat and scale this strategy over the next decade. But now that you've heard how the technology and content from different verticals come together into this single consumer experience across multiple business models, a natural question you might have is, how do we actually optimize the business across these verticals when there is the potential for wildly different business outcomes depending on which piece of content the consumer clicks on? It's a tricky problem. Now, this goes back to the metric Daniel mentioned earlier, lifetime value, or LTV for short. You'll hear more on this approach after the break from Tony Jabara, head of machine learning at Spotify. But let me give you a little introduction. We think about lifetime value as the value of a consumer over the entire lifetime on the service. It's the best representation we found of how much value Spotify provides to consumers and creators. And we've spent years building advanced machine learning models that estimate and predict the lifetime value of every combination of a piece of content and a user on the platform across all the verticals every single day. It's important to note that this is not an attention economy where content competes for the user's attention in the moment. It's actually something quite different. It's a value economy where the content competes to give users the most long-term value that makes them want to stick around for as long as possible. This is what we predict and optimize for. And each month, users vote many of them with their wallet, if they think we've done a good job or not. We believe that this approach avoids a lot of the, lot of the traps of the pure attention economy, enabling us to create greater value for consumers, creators, and for Spotify. So taking a step back, we're not just using machine learning to power recommendations. We're also using machine learning to optimize the very company itself. Hello everyone, my name is Tony Jabara and I'm head of machine learning at Spotify. You just heard Gustav discuss the evolution of our platform to distribute multiple verticals in a single machine learning powered user experience. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about the basic three pillars of our company, creators, consumers, and monetization, and how we are broadly growing all three. Number one, growing the most creators and content from music, to podcasts, to audiobooks. Number two, growing the most consumers across countries, plans, and cohorts. And number three, growing the most monetization for those creators using ads, a la carte, subscription, marketplace, and monetized fandom. As we scale these formats and business models, there are more and more things on our platform competing for consumer and creator value. You might say, whoa, this sounds like a lot of complexity. But we've built a machine learning system that now enables us to rein in that complexity and turn it into an advantage. There is this common belief that complexity is bad. And that is because it tends to make the world unpredictable for us humans. But while that complexity may be hard for a human to handle, the rise of machine learning has given us new tools that have no problem handling this complexity. Our machine learning models can now tell us which combination of user, content, and monetization gives the most consumer value and the most creator value at a certain time, enabling us to maximize the total value of the platform at each moment. But while that may sound great, what does creating value actually mean and how do you measure that? Lifetime value, or LTV, 
is a metric that many of us at Spotify spend a lot of time thinking about, modeling, testing, and refining. And we think this is a metric that provides enormous insights into the true value that we provide to consumers, creators, and to Spotify, to Spotify itself. We use this powerful instrument to predict which content yields longer-term retention, engagement, and happiness with the goal of maximizing the lifetime value of all Spotify users. While it is still early days, we are using LTV more and more in our business. Our vision is to have it be the primary driver of all our business decisions, as it allows those decisions to be automated, personalized, and scalable, something that wasn't possible before. So what is lifetime value? It is simple in theory, but very hard in practice. It literally means all the future value that you expect the consumer to bring you across their entire lifetime on the service, discounted to a net present value. If you could know that number with a high degree of certainty, you can do, you can do very powerful things, such as starting to understand which content and recommendations tend to increase lifetime value. Even with content in widely different formats across different business models, you can sum up all the LTV from all the users for a particular piece of content and understand exactly how much that content is worth to you as a business. You can balance your ad load so that the revenue you gain from the ads doesn't come at a cost of a shorter lifetime. That then increases LTV. You can even understand how much financial value a specific software feature rollout contributed to the platform. But doing all this in practice requires instrumenting and encoding the entire company and software, from user behaviors and ad sales forecasts to content contract costs. This is a huge endeavor that we took on a few years ago. But before LTV, we spent years focused on growing the number of users and how many months they would stay on Spotify. We call this lifetime growth, which is closely related to MAU growth. And it is now growing at a great clip. Here's rankings from the third-party measurement company, Antenna, which uses anonymized transaction data to track subscription services. You can see Spotify has the absolute lowest churn of any music streaming service. We're really pleased with where they've placed us within the broader market. So we spent years getting rid of the leaks in the bucket through better content, personalized programming, and personalized experiences. Now we can reliably predict retention, acquisition, and even a user's future lifetime on the service. We base this on their dynamic consumption behavior and static things like the country that a user is in. But today, on top of lifetime, we're also layering in the financial value each user brings to the business and its creators. We measure value by their gross profit contribution. So LTV elegantly unifies the concepts of profitability and lifetime into a single metric that can inform our decision making. We're actually forecasting each and every user's lifetime and also each and every user's lifetime value. We're doing this for each and every user, including our premium subscribers, our free users, and users that convert between the two plans. And as we learn and backtest, we expect huge opportunities to iteratively improve upon our capabilities and precision going forward. So here's a hypothetical example of how our models calculate the LTV of one single, one single user or member. And remember, our forecast is based on what we know about the user today and how they've behaved on our platform so far. And these numbers are just for illustration purposes only. First, we have a model that forecasts how long each user will stick around by calculating survival probabilities over the next 60 months. Then we forecast the gross profit they will generate each month. Specifically, we forecast the gross profit from things like ads, by also forecasting each user's engagement levels to estimate the music and podcast ad load into the future. And then once we have the survival probabilities and the month's gross profit, we multiply each month's survival probability by the month's gross profit. What we end up with 
is the expected gross profit over the lifetime. And we discount the expected gross profit by our cost of capital. In this hypothetical example, we can expect this user to generate 67 euros for the business. So as an experimentation metric, the total LTV seeks to answer the question, if we do X today, what can we expect to be the profit X will bring to the business and its creators in the future? And in the table here on the screen, we calculated the average LTV across all our cohorts, across different regions and different plans for music-only listeners. And then we calculated the relative increase of the LTV of music listeners, who we also activated to podcasts. The percentages on the table show the LTV of podcast-activated users is much higher relative to music listeners. And what's interesting is that the LTV of users who we've activated to listen to both music and podcasts is consistently higher across every region and every plan from free to premium. So this is just one example. And how do we keep on increasing LTV? We plan to repeat what we just did with podcasts by adding audiobooks to the platform. And again, we hope audiobooks will increase our user base's LTV by another plus X percentage points. Because audiobooks should grow their lifetime multiplied by their value. Because it's helping retain users and it's increasing our gross profit. We don't want to increase lifetime at the expense of gross profit for example, by dropping prices. And we don't want to increase gross profit by doing something that a user might accept in the moment but not enjoy in the long term, like cranking up their ad load or recommending lower cost content that isn't right for them. Both could negatively impact their lifetime on the service. So a well-instrumented LTV metric aligns you with your consumers and your creator partners and keeps you honest. So if we have users generally loving Spotify and retaining better and engaging better, you increase the months they spend on the platform. And if we improve things like advertising and we layer in audiobooks and podcast paywalls and some of the marketplace work that Charlie was describing, we increase total company ARPU and margin. And then you take the product of those two things and say, OK, I've taken someone who's going to stay for 14 months and made them stay for 18 months. I've increased their lifetime. Then we also improve the margin profile. If the margin profile for that user is 0.8 euros a month today, but I can increase that number to a buck 40 per month by shifting the user's consumption mix so they generate more margin for longer, I've basically taken this user's LTV and more than doubled it. So we remain careful to increase the margin without reducing the lifetime of the user. And the beauty of growing both numbers together is that our algorithms are also doing smarter things. For example, they don't want to show our users spam for a quick buck today if it will hurt their lifetime and hurt their future total LTV. So we're not going after just instantaneous clicks and engagement like some other consumer facing or ad tech companies. We're thinking about every decision a thousand times a second, 24 seven, to grow the user and the business together for the long term. We recalculate the LTV of each user at Spotify based on how they are behaving and engaging on the platform right now. And we've integrated those tables across most business units at the company. So you can think of the total forecasted LTV summed across all our users as approximately the total value of Spotify. And now with an understanding of the math behind LTV, you're likely asking, what are some of the future applications of this and what are the implications for Spotify's business? We're already using LTV to improve marketing, product, and content decisions. Through our models, we're also improving acquisition, retention, ARPU, and even gross profit across the business. Let me share a few examples. Um, over here, LTV is used to estimate the total or average value of users in a cohort for marketing purposes. So let's say Nina, a marketing exec, wants to know how the average per user value of a cohort of users acquired through a campaign compares to the average value of the Spotify population. So we look at many channels and compare our marketing spend across them 
and become smarter about which channels are giving us the best incremental LTV. On this next slide, we're looking to understand long-term financial outcomes from our A-B tests and our recommendation algorithms. So in this hypothetical example, Frank's product area runs A-B tests on new user-facing features. He wants to know if a new algorithm that promotes podcasts that are retentive and habit-forming is more valuable to users than the old algorithm. He sees that the LTV of the users who tried the targeted, more retentive podcast went up by 0.32 euros. So then Frank knows this, uh, this is a better algorithm. And he rolls it out for all users across the world. <clears throat> and then in the third example, we're starting to understand how a piece of content like a podcast or an album contributes to our future LTV. For example, Julie, a leader on our podcast team, can make things like season renewal and promotion decisions based on the content efficiency of each podcast. We run tests on some of our podcasts to help Julie know which ones generate more LTV per hour of streaming. And we found that clickbait content manufactured to fool users and algorithms can actually decrease LTV. And so we should never promote that content to our users. And now we know which shows in particular we should acquire and renew to grow the LTV of our users and overall business. So in this example, we can look at a podcast like Alex Cooper's Call Her Daddy and say, what is its LTV impact to the business divided by how much it costs us to acquire the show and to promote it? and we will focus only on renewing shows that really have a great return for the business. Here's a snapshot of the data we use to track the cost efficiency of many of our podcasts. So in summary, LTV is a power, powerful instrument that number one, allows us to forecast the profitability of experiments and other initiatives and understand their potential impact on our bottom line. Number two, it promotes a thoughtful approach to investment in innovation and content. And number three, it predicts which content and experiences yield longer term retention, engagement, and happiness, all of which are essential for Spotify to reach our goal of 50 million creators and 1 billion listeners globally, while also ensuring the business grows. We're making more and more of these decisions automated and letting machine learning basically mediate human creativity to quantifiably grow the total future LTV of the business. That is the Spotify machine. 